All right, let's take a look at Leak Code 1326, minimum number of taps to open to water a garden. So the question is going to give us an input, an end value, which tells us how many units large the garden is, and then it gives us a range. Uh, it gives us a range list. So all of these numbers, so the first index represents the sprinkler size that the zeroth um, sprinkler can reach. So the zeroth sprinkler can sprinkle three units in the left direction and three units in the right direction. And then um, sprinkler at index one can sprinkle four units to the left and four units to the right. And then, you know, same thing goes with this next sprinkler. The next sprinkler can sprinkle one unit to the left and one unit to the right. So uh, the question is, they want you to see what's the minimum number of sprinklers you need to turn on in order to uh, cover the whole uh, n units, right, from 0 to n. What's the minimum number of faucets, sprinklers, you need to turn on in order to cover every, every unit in that range? <clears throat> so the first thing we want, so th this is a three-part problem. So the first thing we want to do is create the intervals. So what do I mean by intervals? So I kind of already, you know, explained it, right? But, you know, the faucet, the, the sprinkler at index zero can sprinkle three units to the left and three units to the right. So we want to express that as, a, as, a, as an interval. So the interval can be written as zero to three. So if, if it can sprinkle into the negative values, we don't really care because um, that's not helping us, that's not helping us solve the issue at hand, right? Because all they care about is covering um, zero to n. So that's that's our goal. Our goal is to cover all the units from zero to n. So if we can cover anything below zero, we don't really care about that. So even though this sprinkler, the first sprinkler, and, and maybe the last sprinkler would also cover into the values past five, but like past n, we don't care about those values. All we care about is the values from zero to n. So we can kind of just, you know, you know, take that into account when we're creating the intervals. So yeah, just just you know, set the lower bound as zero and set set the upper bound as five. You know, anything above and below that we don't really care. Okay, so the first interval is zero to three, right? So you know, we can go from the zeroth um, unit to the third unit using just the first sprinkler. The second sprinkler or sprinkler at index one can go from the zeroth unit to the fifth unit, and then yada yada yada. So you know, sprinkler at index two can go from the first unit to the third unit. The next one can go from the second unit to the fourth unit. And then, yeah, so these two sprinklers, sprinklers at index four and at index five, they can't cover anything, right? But they can only cover themselves. They can only sprinkle on four, four and five to five. Okay, so hopefully you understand how to create the intervals. That's pretty straightforward. So what can we do with the intervals now? So the idea is that once we've created these intervals, now we can convert this to a jump game two problem. So I've already done a video on jump game two, but I'm still gonna you know recap how to solve um, how to do that algorithm in this video because I don't want you guys to have to um, redirect to the other video. I mean, if you want to reinforce your learning, then by all means go ahead and check out the other video as well. But you'll, you'll be able to solve this problem just from watching this video. So uh, once we have the intervals, then what we're going to do is we're going to create, we're going to reprocess the intervals into a format, which is, you know, the same as the format for jump game two. That way we can just directly apply the jump game two algorithm onto it. So we need to create a one dimensional list, right? Because this is like a 2D nested list pretty much. And, um, yeah, so we want to convert it into the 1D list to, to do the um, jump game 2 algo on it. So in order to do that, basically, we're going to have an array called best reaches. And the idea is uh, each index is just going to represent the furthest possible unit that sprinkler can reach. So, um, yeah, so sprinkler 0 can reach uh, can reach the fifth unit, right? We we see here there's there's two sprinklers that can start at zero, and, and the furthest one of those two is the one that ends at unit five. And then um, here for index one, um, so I guess it's not necessarily saying the sprinkler can reach number five, but it's saying that um, 
starting from this unit, what's the furthest unit we can reach if we started at that unit? So starting at unit 1, the furthest we can reach is unit 3. And you can see from that interval here. And then the next one is starting at unit 2, what's the furthest unit we can reach? And there's only one option, and that's 4. And then starting at unit 3, what's the furthest we can reach? Well, there's actually nothing that starts at unit 3, so we just skip that. Uh, we leave it blank. And then same with 4, what's the farthest we can reach starting at unit 4? Uh, it's just 4. And then same with 5. five the furthest we can reach starting at unit 5 is unit 5. And so, um, actually, we're going to have to initialize an array that's, you know, as big as their, um, as big as their boundaries, 10 to the fourth. And, um, yeah, I'll kind of cover why we need to do that later. But, um, yeah, just know that when you create this best reaches array, you're going to have to initialize it to be the size of, um, 10 to the fourth. Um, yeah. Okay, so um, so once we have this best reaches, now we can do the jump game 2 algorithm. So if you are not familiar with that, then I'll go over that again in this video. So uh, basically, we have three variables. So we have a max reach, uh, which just is like a running, you know, running variable that keeps track of the best possible, the furthest possible location we can reach. We have a jumps to keep track of how many jumps we've taken and we have a layer end to, to pretty much um, so so okay I forgot to mention so jump game 2 is actually innately it's actually a breadth first search type of problem so we might not see that because we're just given a you know a 1D list but actually this is a breadth breath first search type of problem and we can treat it layer by layer so that's why I have the layer end here and I'll explain that in a second so if we kind of break this down layer by layer so everything we can reach from the with zero jumps is consider our zeroth layer so we, we're we're plopped down onto this um, index zero right without having to take any jumps we're we're starting here so then from this location from layer zero we can reach all of these um, locations. Uh, we can reach all of these numbers, um, 2, 1, and 0. So this whole section right here, that's your layer 1, because you can reach all of those from layer 0. And then our layer 2, um, well technically it doesn't exist in this problem because um, we can never cross this um, threshold. But um, yeah, so basically you, you kind of get the idea with the layers, right? So, you know, layer 0 is where we start and then layer 1 is everything that we can get to from the stuff at layer 0 and then everything at layer 2 is all the locations we can get to from um, layer 1. <clears throat> okay so that's kind of how we're going to that's kind of how you find the minimum number of jumps it takes to get to the end right it's just uh, whatever layer that um, that uh, final location is is placed into right so Right, I already told you that max reach is going to just hold, you know, a running sum of the max possible, the, the furthest possible location we can reach. So let's kind of just walk through this example here. So, so we just do a linear walkthrough of this array. So I have the index, indexes, you know, written out here and we have our I pointer. So the first thing we do is, let me reset this real quick. Okay, the first thing we do is we, we um, just iterate through, and, and one condition we have to check is if i is equal to the layer end, that means we've finished looking at every, every node at that layer, if you will. And then if you've finished looking at every node at that layer, then you can increase your layer count. So jumps is essentially the number of layers. So you can increment your jumps to one. Uh, you can increment by one. So actually, before you do that, you want to update your max reach, right? So if you forgot how to do that, basically the max location you can reach from index 0 is um, 3, right? Because um, if you just add 3 to 0, you, you get 3, right? Because from, from here, you can go out to 1, 2, 3, right? So our max reach right now is 3, and then our... Um, 
layer n so our jumps also increment by one because we just finished looking at everything in layer zero so now we have to go to layer one and then our layer end is also going to be updated to match whatever the max reach is so basically to recap what these three variables mean right now they're saying that with one jump the the furthest possible location you can reach is three and that checks out doesn't it right you know with one jump from from here with one jump the furthest we can get to is this location right so that that makes sense and, and that's where our first layer ends as well right your first layer ends um, wherever that you know the furthest it can reach is for for that layer so <clears throat> right so after we finish processing that zeroth index now we go to the first index and then we try to update our max reach so at every index we're going to just try to update max reach so um, what's the maximum we can reach from this location well we we can go two in in the positive direction right so that will land us at index three right so uh, three is already equal to three so we don't update the max reach and then are we at the end of this layer no we're not the end of the layer is at index three right so we don't increment the layer count or we don't uh, we don't increment jumps so let's keep iterating until we reach the end of the layer so now we're at the next index and we try to update max reach so um, what's the maximum jump we can what's the maximum location we can get to um, using a jump size of one here um, it's just you know the next index right so we don't actually update the max reach because three is equal to three and then um, yeah, are we at the end of this layer? No, we're not. The end of the layer is the next index, right? So let's keep going. So now we've we we've gotten to this location, and um, before we so we know that this is the end of the layer. But before we increment the layer count, let's first try to update our max reach. So um, the max jump size we can take at this location is zero. So actually, our max reach won't change. So now let's update the layer count so layers goes up to two and the um, layer end also um, gets gets updated to match whatever the max the current max reach is is holding right so that's three so it doesn't actually get updated so what so um, I use this example because let, let's keep going forward um, okay first first to recap right so what these three variables are saying right now it's saying that with two jumps the furthest we can get to is location three, right? So with two jumps, you know, no matter, you can pause the video, you can try it for yourself. Starting at this zeroth index with two jumps, the furthest we can get to is index three. Isn't that right? You know, if we were to take three jumps here and then take a jump of zero, we'd still be here, right? Or if we take, um, you know, a jump size of one at first, and then we take a jump size of two, you know we're still landing at index three right so with two jump sizes no matter how you do it the furthest you can reach is index three okay so now i use this example for a reason because um, in jump game two they told you that there'd always be a um, a valid path to reach the end but this question it's not guaranteed that you can always cover the whole interval right um, they say that you should return negative one if you can't water the whole interval <clears throat> Okay, so anyways, yeah. So pretty much the idea is, um, you know, once we finish looking at this layer two, now we're gonna move ahead. And um, yeah, so now we're at index um, four and our current max reach is three. So that means we couldn't have actually gotten to index four if, you know, our max reach is lower than the current index we're at. So if we ever come to a situation where we have surpassed our current index is greater than our max reach we can immediately just return you know negative one because that means that there is no way to water this interval this this position right here and um or, or sorry there's there was no way to reach this location here at index four you know right no matter how we you know how no matter which combination of jumps we take starting here there's no way to reach this fourth index so um yeah, like like I said, the if the index that we're on is greater than the max reach, then we can return uh, negative one. And 
Um, yeah, so that's pretty much the algorithm. Um, so I mentioned earlier that you want to initialize this best reaches array to, um, you want to just initialize it to be an, a list that is um, size 10,000, um, 10,001 10, actually. And the reason you do this is because this n value they give you could actually be, you know, the n value could be like 10,000. The n value could actually be 10,000 or something. And um, you know maybe their intervals only cover up to 100 or something, right? So then you would need to uh, you, you would need to account for for iterating all the way through to 10,000. Um, yeah. So that that's why you need to create the initial best reaches array to be the size of 10,000. Okay. Hopefully you guys understood that this uh it's hard to explain jump game too it's not it's not very intuitive to be honest with you but um if you have done jump game two before then this problem should not be too hard so it, like to recap the first thing you want to do is create the intervals um and then after that you want to um, create the list of best reaches you know using these intervals and then with the best reaches you can just apply the jump game two algorithm all right uh, if you have any questions, please leave it in the comments. Hopefully that was a good enough explanation. Um, yeah, so leave some constructive feedback. Um, I'm sorry if I stumbled across my words a lot during this video, but um, yeah, I, I feel like that's the best I can do. So hopefully you guys understood that. If you don't understand this video, maybe check out my jump game two video. Maybe, maybe that's a little bit more well done on that jump game part. But um, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed and thanks for watching.